Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel, and I'm a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today I'm going to be dedicating a video to chest, to the decollete, to the chest, to the chest skin. And we're going to talk about different anti aging treatments, some that work, some that don't work so well, um, and different things that we can do to make the neck and decollete, actually not the neck, that's a whole other video, but the chest and decollete skin look its best and to match it, your face or match the skin on your face. So I apologize, you're going to probably hear my two kids in the background, but the thing is is that I'm not really a YouTuber, I'm just a cosmetic dermatologist who likes to share educational information and non-sponsored content and just being a mom of two small kids and just running two businesses, sometimes there's like no good time to film a video and I I just got to just be authentic and just get these videos in when I can because it's just a very busy full life. So if you hear my kids in the background, I apologize. If that's going to annoy you, then you probably don't want to watch this video. Hopefully they're not too loud. So there are many things that we can do to improve the cosmetic appearance of the skin on our chest or known, you know, otherwise known as a decollete. And the skin on our chest is different than other skin on other areas of the body, including the face. And the epidermis and the dermis are much thinner there. It lacks a lot of pilosebaceous units and sebaceous glands that we find in the face. And it has a different exposure to environmental insults and UV light because of reflection you know, off of surfaces or the lack of photo protection that we usually you know, don't give to the skin on our chest as we do on our face. And we're not as diligent about photo protecting for an entire lifetime. So for my younger beauties out there, sorry about the kids, the younger beauties out there watching this, just make sure that you photo protect your chest just as diligently as you do on your neck or your face and the backs of your hands too, because these are areas that you really don't think of now, but later on, you know, in your late 30s and early 40s and beyond will, you know, come back and haunt you. And photo protecting at a really early age is really important because remember most of the, the photo exposure or UV light exposure that we get before the age of 18 will catch up to us later on. So that's why if somebody, you know, is in their 40s or 50s and like, I use sunscreen every day, but I'm still getting these brown spots and I'm still getting these separate keratoses, which are those little like stuck on kind of, um, you know, brown spots that you get or, or, or sunspots or, you know, photo damage. That is from lack of photo protection that happened before you were even 18 years old. It will come back and get you. There's things that we can do to reverse it and, um, you know, skincare products that we can use to reverse it in office procedures that we can do to kind of correct and protect the skin from further damage and reverse any damage that has happened already. But that is why even with the most diligent, you know, sunscreen use and use of active ingredients, you'll still sometimes you know, accumulate those brown spots and those annoying sunspots because that's all from a history of sun exposure at early on. So protecting your neck and decollete and your chest just as diligently as you do your face is really important. So I wanted to start with that. So in addition to photo protection and diligent use of sunscreen at all times on your chest, it's really important to use active ingredients and skincare products that are going to correct and protect the skin on our, our, our chest as well. So things like hydroquinone or non-hydroquinone um, brightening agents like CE ferulic, vitamin C, um, L-ascorbic acid, um, azelaic acid and ferulic acid, different antioxidants that are going to help um, normalize the pigmentation and make those brown spots fade and kind of blend in all the skin tones of that whole area. So when you look at brown spots under the microscope and you look at a cross section of the skin, brown spots under the microscope look like these irregular patches and distributions of melanin, which is the pigment in our skin, juxtaposed to areas where it may be lacking or less, and then they'll have areas where there's more, and it's just this patchy distribution of melanin. And when you use, you you know, antioxidants like L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C or kojic acid, ferulic acid, or hydroquinone even, it will help normalize and put all that melanin in the same plane, which basically gives that beautiful glow. When people have that glowing skin, it's because under the microscope, all that melanin is in the same dermal plane. So for the, for the chest area, if you're struggling with brown spots, using you know, a brightener or a melanocyte um, inhibitor, it will help just correct and um, normalize that pigmentation, which will give it a better cosmetic you know, look or appearance. So when you're talking about brown spots, especially on the chest or anywhere on the body, there's two components of, of correcting that. You have to 
suppress the overproduction of melanin from the melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells in our skin, but you also have to relieve and correct the melanin that's already been distributed. You know, the melanin that has already been produced and is just hanging around and sitting in the skin. And the way you do that is with chemical exfoliants. You could use mechanical exfoliants too, but for the chest, because that skin is so thin and delicate, I usually recommend um, the chemical exfoliants. So AHAs, um, BHAs, also if you have acne in that area, but AHAs like glycolic acid, lactic acid, these are all going to exfoliate gently the dead stratum corneum layer cells in that skin that is just hanging on to melanin that's irregularly distributed. So there's two components. Again, you want to decrease the melanocyte you know, production of melanin, and that's where all your melanocyte um, inhibitors come in, your hydroquinone, your non-hydroquinones, um, your vitamin Cs, things like that. And that of that nature, but then also you're getting rid of all of that, you know, dead keratin cells and all that, you know, stratum corneum layer of, of cells that are just holding onto that pigment. So you have to get rid of the pigment that has already been irregularly distributed with a mechan with the chemical exfoliation of AHAs and PHAs. So that helps. Other active ingredients for the chest include retinol and argireline, things like that. Argireline is also referred to as Botox in a bottle. The way that it works is it inhibits the muscular contraction. Now, when the skin is very thin and it's attached to the muscle underneath the chest, what happens is it can get, cause you know a textural irregularity, chest creases become accentuated. So when you use things like argireline in the, um, in the chest area, it just kind of helps smooth it out. It's like kind of like dousing the chest with a little bit of Botox to kind of smooth the contour. And the way that it works is by affecting the snaps near con complex, which is basically how Botox works as well. So that's why in my MDR um, skincare product line, which I hate to like talk about it because I'm just getting educational out, you know, information out to you. I don't want to like name drop my, my skincare line, but when I made the neck tight serum, which is also used on the neck and decollete, I made sure to have the argireline in it also with other active ingredients that are specifically engineered for that skin to help the cosmesis of it. And that's one of the main mechanisms of action to make it look nice and smooth and tight. So, you know, you want to have active ingredients that are going to correct the skin from, you know, damage that has already occurred, protect it from further damage. That's a lot of the photoprotection that we talk about. And then also, um, you know, having some mechanisms of action that are going to, you know, have other ways to smooth out and make the, the chest skin look its best as well. So by, you know, correcting pigmentation, correcting sun damage, reversing sun damage, and then just giving that better overall cosmetic effect through that mechanism of action as well. So that's, you know, active ingredients in um, chest serums and neck, neck serums too. Um, it's really important to include, you know, some type of vitamin A derivative, usually in the form of retinol. Um, and, you know, having a microencapsulated vehicle delivery system will help minimize sensitization because that skin can be a little bit more um, prone to irritation because of the, the nature of it and the histology of it and how thin it is. Um, and the lack of sebaceous glands in that area. And then also, you know, your antioxidants and um, like your vitamin Cs and the antioxidants that I mentioned before. And then our geraline and some other active ingredients are really important too. Polypodium leucotomas, I can go on and on, but those are some of the key ingredients that you wanna look for um, for, for chest serums. And, um, you know, DNA repair enzymes, peptides, those are also key components as well. So we've talked about sun protection, we've talked about active ingredients and in skincare products. Now let's talk about the fun stuff, all the in-office procedures. And lasers are one of the one of your best friends when it comes to chest skin. And there's so many different kinds of lasers, and I'm gonna try to keep it simple and not go on too much of a tangent, but there's different active uh, aspects of <laughs> you guys are so loud. I'm trying to film here. Okay. And just to preface it, I know I mentioned it before, but my clinic is 100% cosmetic and I'm laser fellowship trained. So lasers are my jam. I love lasers and devices. And I feel like they have the most effect on not only skin on the chest, but all areas of the body, including the face. And so I always say this, but you know, when trying to select a provider who's like a laser fellowship trained physician, it's not necessary to have that level of training all the time, but if it's your first time having a laser procedure or you're a little bit hesitant or you're like a darker skin type who may be more prone to hyperpigmentation or complications, it makes sense to go to a laser specialist. You may have to travel to go to one, but looking for an ACGME accredited fellowship, it just sets us apart from people who don't have that fellowship training or you know, a medi spa down the street where people are kind of learning how to do lasers like on the fly or YouTubing it. It just makes a really big difference because I've also seen 
using lasers, especially on the chest skin, because the chest is more susceptible to complications because of the nature of it being thinner and more prone to scarring and you know irreversible pigmentation and things of that nature, just make sure that you go to somebody who knows what they're doing and that is gonna have a low complication rate and a high success rate because you also don't wanna go somewhere who, you know, or to a provider who's so hesitant to use the lasers that you don't even get a result either. So when it comes to lasers, when I'm looking at the skin and I'm seeing, you know, my beauties and my patients in my office, I always just break it down because there's usually a lot of changes that happen on the chest. There could be brown spots. There could be like a ruddy um, redness or erythema, which we call poikiloderma of savat. Dermatologists like to give long medical names for just very simple things. Um, sometimes we get this ruddiness or this redness on the chest that happens from sun exposure. And sometimes people will refer to it as like kind of like a rosacea on their chest. But what it is, it's just an increase of vasculature, a lot of blood vessels that respond in, you know, response to a lot of UV light exposure over the years. So there could be like a red component to it, there could be brown spots there, there could be white spots, which we call idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis, which in English, and dermatologists, again, have long names for everything, it just means kind of like white spots. Guttate means raindrop, actually, in medical terms. So it looks like these like kind of little white raindrops, but what that actually is, is just a decrease in melanin synthesis by the melanocytes from sun damage. So you wanna make light spots darker, dark spots lighter, get rid of like that red ruddy look and just reverse the photo damage and then also improve the texture. If you have chest creases, um, you know, if you have just a crepey skin on the chest, there that's a component too. So when trying to decide what laser would be best, there's some lasers that kind of are like jack of all trades, master of none. Like they'll make everything better, but they're not really good at one thing. Or you'll have a laser that's more tuned and toned in on doing achieving one goal. Like for example, the Pico laser is great at getting rid of brown spots. V-beam is good at getting rid of the red, rid of the redness. Fraxel laser is kind of good at a little bit of everything. It'll make the redness a little bit less apparent. It'll make brown spots fade. May not go away completely, but overall it'll it'll fade. It'll kind of repigment the hypopigmented white spots. Um, and and so just when deciding on what laser to do, sometimes it's a combination of lasers. Sometimes it's just one laser that we do. Some people are like, it's the redness that bothers me. We do a V-beam and it looks great, but the brown spots are still there. So then we'll go in and we'll use a Pico laser to kind of adjust and, and spot treat the brown spots. Or say there's kind of just diffuse, very tan, light brown spots, but then there's like two or three really brown ones that really just bug you. And then we'll go do the Pico on those and we'll do Fraxel all over. So it just everybody's different and it's really beautiful to be able to customize each laser treatment and each laser laser combination of treatments for every individual chest. You know, and then some people, sometimes people will just be more bothered by the chest creases than the brown spots or kind of that ruddy, you know, just pigmented look and they'll be more targeted on that. And then we'll do Fraxel on different settings to kind of like smooth out those, those chest creases. So lasers are a very customized approach and they do a great job with rejuvenating the chest skin but you have to know which laser does what and what combination would give you the results that you're looking for. And most often, first round, we'll do a little bit of everything. We'll do, you know, V-beam to get rid of the redness. We'll do Fraxel to help with the texture and the brown spots. And then we'll do Pico for those really stubborn brown spots. And then sometimes we'll other, do other lasers too, depending on what the chest looks like and what that skin looks like. And that's the beauty of it. And just to adjust the settings and adjust, you know, select the wavelengths and what we're gonna use to customize each individual treatment for each individual chest that may have different uh, morphological features or different features of aging than, than someone else's. So that usually gives the best response. And usually everybody will say how many treatments are needed. Usually it's about one to three treatments and it gets better each time. Now, sometimes people have one laser treatment and they're like, I'm happy with that. Like I got 60% improvement. That's great. And some people are like, okay, I like that. And now I want more. I want to be perfect. So it just depends. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. How many laser treatments? It really just depends on where you're going to be happy with your result. And then results last, you know, for several years. It just depends on how much sun damage, you know, or environmental exposures you've had prior to the treatment. Because as I said before, even if you do laser treatments and you get your chest to be baby soft and have baby skin there, all that accumulated photo damage that you have before the age of 18 is gonna catch up to you and over the next like four or five years, it's gonna manifest again and then you gotta knock it down with the laser again. Now, it usually won't be as severe or noticeable as it was at the baseline before your first laser treatment, but you know, it's aging is gonna to continue to happen 
ex, you know, uh, ramifications of earlier sun exposure are going to still manifest. Lasers can't stop time, you know, unfortunately. They do a pretty good job at reversing it, but <laughs> they don't they don't stop time. It's going to continue to, you know, your skin's going to continue to evolve and age and just doing regular maintenance lasers um, is what I recommend and what my patients who, you know, are of all ages have the most beautiful skin because they are on, on their A game and they are up with their laser maintenance and just keeping that skin, you know, be as healthy and as, as baby soft as, as possible. So lasers in general, whether we're talking about chest skin or any other skin, it basically induces your body's own regenerative processes to make collagen, to make elastin, to correct for hyperpigmentation, to reverse sun damage. So that's why people who laser their skin, you know, I see patients of all ages in my cosmetic dermatology practice, and the ones who have the best looking skin on their face, their neck, their chest, are people who have been great with photo protection, using, you know, active ingredients in their skincare products, usually medical grade. I know that's a inflammatory, word, but using medical grade skincare, skincare products, meaning just, you know, higher level, um, more technology and scientifically backed products and people who've done lasers their whole life, because instead of like passively doing something like injecting filler or, you know, having surgery, you're basically inducing your body's own regenerative processes. And there's nothing that can come compared to a laser treatment because you're inducing the skin to act and behave younger and to be histologically healthier, which manifests with baby soft skin. So, um, and healthy skin is beautiful skin. So what that means is when you have photo damage or you have actinic keratosis or squamous cell carcinoma or skin cancer, that's not pretty. That's not pretty skin. Pretty skin is when there are no evident, there's no evidence of photo damage. There's no actinic keratosis or precancers. There's no skin cancers. Um, there is no, you know, photo damage. And usually when I ask my beauties who are, you know, in their 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond, and they have this beautiful chest skin, I'm like, how do you have skin that that's, that's that beautiful? Like, how have you kept it, you know, so healthy over the years? And it's usually, they did lasers in the 90s, they did lasers their whole life or periodically every five to 10 years. Really, especially for the chest skin, there's really nothing that can compare with the effects of a laser because you're inducing your body to do the work. You're correcting photo damage, you're stimulating collagen, you're stimulating relating elastin, you're increasing an immune response to come take care of and mitigate all those rapidly dividing cells that can later on cause a skin cancer if you don't, you know, stop them from dividing out of control and creating a skin cancer or tumor genesis. So basically, you know, enhancing your body's own regenerative processes and enhancing your body's ability to fight mutations and repair DNA that would otherwise may lead you to have a precancers, which we call actinic keratosis or skin cancers like squamous cell or basal cell carcinoma. So I always say, healthy skin is beautiful skin. So if you're not doing lasers on your chest skin to reverse photo damage for the cosmetic appearance of it, do it for your overall skin health because without it, you can you know, set yourself up or be more at risk for skin cancer because skin cancer is not pretty, precancers aren't pretty, photo damage isn't pretty, and it's not healthy either. But healthy skin is beautiful. It's my, you know, it's it's devoid of any precancerous pink scaly patches or you know pearly papules or things that look like skin cancer. So you know, it's 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 always focus on having healthy skin because healthy skin is beautiful skin, and lasers will get you there. So now that we talked about lasers, let's talk about other devices. So microneedling. I'm not a big microneedling fan just because the results are always suboptimal. Um, patients are always dissatisfied. It's a lot of money, a lot of pain, and usually there's some inflammation that happens one to two weeks after the microneedling procedure, whether you're using an at-home microneedling device, which hopefully you're not, you're using you know, Vivace or Profound or Morpheus 8, which has a ton of marketing backing it up. But honestly, on my side of things, I see complications all the time from microneedling. I see unhappy patients, I see complications, I see post-inflammatory erythema, I see post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and a lot of dissatisfied patients and customers. So I don't usually recommend microneedling. I'm not that big of a fan of it because when compared to lasers, lasers work so much better and have so much more scientific data backing it up that I would never choose a microneedling over a laser as a provider or as a patient myself. So, you know, I'm in my 40s, mid 40s now, oh my gosh, almost my late 40s, and I've been doing, you know, laser procedures on my face, neck, and decollete my entire life. And I feel like if I've been doing microneedling this whole time, you know, my skin won't be as healthy. So, you know, 
nothing against people who do like or back microneedling up. I just, as a provider from my experiences and from patient feedback, I haven't been impressed with microneedling results. So I wouldn't recommend microneedling for the chest skin. Now, if any of you have had microneedling, drop a comment and let me know if you have had a good response because I also like to know, you know, what you guys are experiencing too because that's data worth, you know, kind of contemplating and, um, you know, taking into account. But I, on these videos, I always like to be fully comprehensive and if it's not a treatment that I offer or I recommend, I still want to include it because when doing your Google search for you know chest skin and chest rejuvenation um, it will come up okay so we've talked about lasers we talked about microneedling we talked about different devices the devices we haven't talked about yet are some of my favorite energy-based devices so thermage soft wave oil therapy thermage is my favorite I'm actually not that big of a soft wave or oil or ther oil ther I can't talk or an oil therapy fan because I think that the results that I achieve as a provider with thermage are uh, superior but I'm not a big fan of it for the chest and for the decollete. For skin tightening, for a lower face, for periorbital um, rejuvenation, um, even on you know the abdomen after babies or you know the arms and legs for that crepey skin, Thermage does a great job. But for the chest, I feel like there's better options. So although you know you could do a soft wave or a th oil therapy or a Thermage or a Thermofrax for the chest, I mean, is it gonna hurt you? No. Is it gonna have some benefit? Yes. But I don't feel like the results are that like breathtaking as a laser or a fraxel are for the chest skin. Other areas of the body, including like the lower face and other areas to be rejuvenated, thermogen energy-based devices are awesome and they give great results. For the chest, it's just not as, you know, you don't have that wow factor. You're not, you know, you're not as impressed with those results. It, it can help, but if you're gonna invest in a treatment, I probably wouldn't go with an energy-based device treatment for the chest. I a thousand percent would go with lasers or the next treatment option that I'm about to talk about, biostimulatory fillers. Biostimulatory fillers induce your body's own regenerative processes to stimulate collagen and elastin synthesis, the ground substance of our skin that gives that beautiful, tight, beautiful contour. So Radius, not Sculptra, is my favorite for the chest. I've been doing practicing cosmetic dermatology for over 15 years. I've tried everything in every area, and I am just basing this off years and years of practice. Sculptra is also in the biostimulatory category, but Sculptra works better for other areas. Certain treatments have their place and excel in achieving certain goals more than others, depending on the location of injection and what you're trying to achieve. So Sculptra for the mid face for volume loss from aging, or you know, if you lose a bunch of weight, Sculptra to build up volume in the mid face is my favorite. I like it over Radius. For the neck and chest biostimulatory effect, um, I like Radius better than Sculptra. For booty volume, um, for increasing um, booty volume and um, smoothing out cellulite and things of that nature, I like Sculptra better than Radius. So depending on the area that we're treating and the goal that we're trying to achieve, certain biostimulatory fillers work better than others, in my opinion, and again, I'm saying this based on my 20 years of education and over 15 years in practice. Radius that's hyper dilute, especially for the chest creases, does an amazing job of just erasing those chest creases. The before and afters are usually very impressive. Hopefully I can put some up here in the video because I do it all day, every day. And when you combine a biostimulatory filler, especially hyper dilute radius for the chest creases and you compound that with a Fraxel laser treatment, I mean, those results are so good and they last and it just can transform someone's chest. And I love doing it and I love showing patients their before and afters because they're always so happy when they see their photo damage is gone, their brown spots, their crepey skin, those chest creases that are so annoying when they go like this. It just gets better. So using hyperdilute radius with a combination laser treatment, whether it's Fraxel with a little bit of um, Pico and some V-beam, I mean, it really can transform chest skin and it's, it's super exciting and it's very rewarding. Uh, as a provider to be able to do that for my patients. So you can see I'm super passionate about this. I love it. And I just like to you know, share what I feel and what I've seen over the years works better. And so when you combine biostimulatory fillers with lasers, there's really no comparison. That's the next level results right there. So one last treatment I wanna make sure that I draw your attention to and just give it time. Um, but I don't have as much experience with it, to be honest, is Elicor. Now, I do have a lot of experience with Elicor for lower face rejuvenation and for it's FDA approved for the treatment of moderate to severe laxity and wrinkles of the lower face. 
Elicor is not FDA approved yet for chest and decollete skin, but I think that there's a lot of promise for this area. So because you're gonna see a lot on Elicor um, in the upcoming months because it's a recent launch. Um, again, I participated in the clinical trials many, many years ago and was really impressed with this device back then. And I'm excited to now have it in my practice and incorporate it into my practice and provide it for my patients. I've been really amazed and impressed with the results. Um, and what is micro, micro, what is Elicor? So Elicor is a microcoring device that takes out microcores of skin. It's basically like a skin excision, and it's like shrink wrapping the skin. So it takes out microcores of skin, and it's basically taking if you take like a block of cheese and turn it into Swiss cheese, and then close the holes. It cinches everything down in a scarless fashion, and they call it a scarless facelift because it's indicated for the lower face. And a lot of patients have asked, well, can you do it on my chest? This is the thing. I've never treated a patient to date. This is uh, February 2022. I haven't treated a patient's chest yet because most of you know the hundreds of patients that I've treated has been on label FDA approved um, area for the lower the FDA approved area of the lower face. I'm so sorry, my kids are like being so crazy. They're having fun. It's like a you know it's like a weekend night and we're all home having fun. So um, I'm not gonna let that stop me though. So the theory is is that if it has those amazing results on the lower face it's gonna have the same results on the chest now the problem is is that Elicor the microcoring device comes in a different option it has the handpiece that has the handpiece has different options for the depth and the percentage um, of treatment so you can kind of increase the surface area that's treated and you can increase or decrease the depth now the skin on the chest is a lot more thin so you would think that you don't have to go as deep as you would on the face however when you don't go as deep you're micro coring but you aren't removing that skin as easily and so i think that the company um, may have to go through clinical trials or maybe modify the handpiece to have a specific handpiece engineered for the chest because what I've heard from colleagues, and I haven't tried this out on myself, I'm about to use Elicor on a couple patients and family members. Thanks guys for being my guinea pigs. Um, Mom, I love you. Um, we're gonna try it out on the chest to see how well it does. So the way the microcoring device works is it basically microcores the skin. It punches out tiny little skin excisions that are like less than uh, one millimeter, and there's a vacuum that sucks it, sucks it out. So you're basically excising and sucking the skin out which sounds barbaric, but it's actually very uh, elegant engineering and um, has great cosmetic outcomes. So what happens when the skin is so thin on the chest, it, it will take the microcores out, but it may not be able to be deep enough because that skin is so thin and lax to suck it out. So you're not getting that shrink wrapping effect of the skin. So I think that Elicor is going to be a very promising treatment for chest skin, um, however, you know, I feel like it needs to gain possible FDA approval, or if it's going to be used off-label, we need to play with the percentage treatment area, and we need to play with the depth. So as a provider, you know, I don't do perform procedures that I'm not 100% confident with and that I'm very experienced and well-versed in. So Elicor on the lower face, I'm very comfortable with treating this area. It has very reproducible results. I've done, you know, treated hundreds of patients with beautiful outcomes, but the chest is a new area, so it would be off label. So I will get back to you guys, but I wanted to include Elicor as a possible treatment option for chest rejuvenation, but I don't have the data and there haven't been the clinical trials to um, demonstrate um, its efficacy for that area. That skin is thinner and it may require a different handpiece. So the company may um, go through clinical trials for an indication for the chest and that may include a different handpiece that's specifically engineered for that skin that's histologically a little bit different and a little bit thinner. So last but not least, I wanna include neuromodulators or Botox for the chest area. So Botox, you know, by the same mechanism of action that we were talking about, Argyrolene, that skincare active ingredient that helps kind of relax that thin muscular layer that's attached so in close proximity to the, to the very thin skin of the chest. Doing little droplets of Botox can relax those chest bands, can relax that skin to make it look less crepey or wrinkled. Um, but again, Botox only lasts so long. You know, typically Botox lasts about three to six months. Now there's Daxify, which I believe the chest, 
you know, injection of Daxify would be off-label. They haven't done the clinical trials for that yet, but Daxify is a longer lasting neuromodulator. It's gotten great reviews and um, it's gotten a lot of positive feedback at, among the dermatology community at our academic meetings and speaking to well-respected colleagues in the field of dermatology and friends of mine. Um, people have been really, really happy with it. So um, Daxify for the chest may be an option, especially because it's longer lasting, but neuromodulators in general will help the skin on the chest look better. It's not a permanent solution, and I hate to say any solution is permanent, but you know, it's compared to like a laser treatment that's going to be more longer lasting, you know, lasting, you know, on the order of like three, four, five plus years, you know, Botox or neuromodulators are only going to last three to six months, or in the case of Daxify, even longer than that, you know, nine to possibly even 12 months. So um, that's my chest video and chest skin and decollete skin video. Um, I try to include most treatments that would be useful for the chest area, but the take home message is biostimulatory fillers, lasers, customizable combination laser treatments, photo protection that's next level and very aggressive and very astute and very compliant uh, use of photo protection and active ingredients that you're using on it on a daily basis. Don't be afraid to take, you know, your active ingredients that you're using on your face and gently put them on your chest. Just know that that skin may be a little bit more susceptible to uh, sensitization and maybe use it once or twice a week as opposed to BID or twice a day or, or daily. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope my kids running around weren't too distracting. I'm Hopefully you guys won't be too annoyed by that. But thank you so much for um, appreciating my authenticity. Thank you for um, following and subscribe and sharing this channel with anyone who wants non-sponsored content from a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist. We'll see you guys soon. I love you. Drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what you guys want me to talk about next. Thank you.